I think it's been a long time since we've seen a satellite photograph that looks like this. Clear with just a little bit of typical summertime cumulus over the eastern half of our state here in Texas. And some spectacular storms out there in the Big Bend area. That's going to be around uh, the Davis Mountains. They've got an observatory back there. And this spot right there, that's going to be around Saragossa. They got a big tornado there back in 1987. Pretty unusual to have them that far to the west. Well, there's the weather picture for today. That powerful system that we had yesterday in Nevada, Utah, California, that's moved rapidly across the central Rockies and into the northern plains. Temperatures have come down in the Dakotas quite a bit, leading edge of the front running from Minnesota all the way down through Kansas and into the Texas Panhandle. And you can see on the tail end of that front, those temperatures back behind the front are not that cold. Still up in the 80s, even with a north wind. Out in Texas, we can definitely find that dry line. And with that dry air back behind it, temperatures are up to 108 at Lubbock. Out ahead of the dry line, dew points are in the mid-70s. That's definitely very muggy, but that's where we tend to see it this time of year. The moisture axis, pretty broad, runs from about Dallas all the way over to Mississippi. And I think probably the best moisture running up like that. And I did not analyze it, but I do see an air mass discontinuity right there. Some north winds, that's probably an outflow boundary coming through St. Louis, Columbia, Kansas City, and around Indianapolis. All right, did I miss anybody Yeah, uh, the East Coast getting some of that cool air coming from Quebec and the Maritimes, filtering into Virginia, Pennsylvania, and temperatures down to a very comfortable, looks like maybe 66 at Washington, D.C., but down to the south at Norfolk, 81. So that tropical air just down to the south. And a quick look up in Canada. Hudson Bay is at it again with a 1025, 1026 millibar high, centered about 100 miles northeast of Churchill. And that's a very large high pressure area. We have been discussing this during the past week. And this is a big chunk of polar air that's been working towards the southeast, covering much of New England, Quebec, Ontario, all the way back towards the Canadian high Arctic. So that's going to keep filtering cold air southward over the next several days, at least, until we've completely exhausted or modified that air mass. And up in Alaska, Yukon, temperature is very comfortable there. There's that trough that we typically see this time of year around the McKenzie River Basin, and we're up to around 70 at whatever station that is, just north of the area with the glaciers there. I got to get back up on my Alaska geography here pretty soon. Anyway, what's next? Let's check out the regional satellite. Very quiet throughout the southwestern U.S. I can see some wildfires starting up. Looks like right around Grand Canyon. Another one, I think that'd be southwest of Vernal. And the stuff here, this looks like mountain wave activity. And we're going to be seeing those temperatures coming up quite a bit going into early next week. We're going to cover that shortly, but we're going to see lots of 110s next week. The southeastern U.S., peppered by extensive thunderstorm activity from around the Memphis area eastward all the way to the east coast. That little boundary we talked about, I think that's going to be maybe this thing right here maybe even further south than I originally thought. So hmm, that may be already all the way through Nashville. Yep, there's some north winds or northwest winds right there. So I might have been tricked by that one station, but it does look like maybe there is something running about like that. It's hard to tell. We need to look at more fine-grained data. 
There, how about that? Aviation Weather Center. And we see northwest flow all through southern Illinois. And by doing the streamlines like this, we end up with maybe something like this. Looks like maybe a deformation zone across southeastern Missouri. But this tells us that there's probably two air masses in play here. And that would support that frontal boundary being, yeah, right about in through here. Here we can see it on the SPC Theta E field. That's going to be the boundary right there. So from south of Kansas City through the Missouri boot heel to just north of Memphis, and then it becomes a little bit less obvious. A little trace of it on the velocity tensor magnitude right through here. And you can also make out that deformation zone type pattern in the plotted wind field. There it is. And this is telling us that there is divergence along that axis, and then we have convergence along this axis. And away from those areas, it would be indeterminate. We can also look at the divergence and vorticity field right through there, little axis of cyclonic vorticity and convergence. Convergence being indicated by the red lines, these little red isoplets, and vorticity, not upper level vorticity, but pure relative vorticity in the low, lower levels. That would be indicated by this green shading that you see right there in the yellow and orange colors as well. So anyway, that kind of confirms that there is something right through there. And this chart is a bit of a mess, but the temperatures are going to be the red and purple lines. The dew point, the cyan dashed lines with the colored shading. So if we want to look at dew points, we can see a 76 degree dew point line right there, and then a 78 right there around the northeast Arkansas region. And up to the north, much drier. See, there's a 62 right there. This is probably overturned air from an MCS at some point overnight or yesterday. And with that boundary right there, we can see that the moisture axis is crossing it right through here. So if I was a forecaster, I might be a little bit concerned of potential initiation right there, maybe some more organized activity. However, that is a deformation zone, which means your convergence can be indeterminate and your better odds will be to the west and to the east, actually. However, the atmosphere will, of course, do whatever it wants. The boundary located right here and the deformation zone right in here. And we are certainly getting that initiation along that convergence part. And only a few towers on the west side. But even in the middle of this deformation zone, we are getting storms going up. Maybe just enough convergence right in this region here and not enough to support thunderstorms around Memphis and the extreme northeastern parts of Arkansas. And away from that axis, a few other storms. So there's certainly a few boundaries there not being resolved very well by the surface field, but the satellite definitely shows those. And we'll take a look at the northeastern U.S. under the influence of that front. Remember that front runs about like that right there. And to the north of that front, the influence of cool air from a relatively moist air mass source. So as a result, lots of stratocumulus and altocumulus through that area. And taking a gander at Gander, Newfoundland. Well, I'm not going to pass up the opportunity to make a bad pun but it's interesting to take a look at the Canadian Maritimes, and you can see that vast amount of cold air advection sweeping across that region. So that would be a very unpleasant place to be. And it is windy through that area, or I should say breezy, 10 to 20 knots, but those temperatures making it very unpleasant. That's definitely jacket weather. The Northern Plains, seeing that cold front advance through that region, and there's the dry downslope air 
in the Dakotas and Nebraska, and it appears we don't have enough moisture to support thunderstorms along that front. Looks like maybe a few going up southeast of Duluth, right there in far northern Wisconsin. But that storm system up in Manitoba, we need to take a look at that. That's a very energetic little low. There it is, west of Winnipeg, moving up into the region northwest of the city. And let me see if I can park that on the very last frame. Not really seeing any anvils, maybe one little anvil right there. However, yeah, we're devoid of any deep convection. Probably a blessing for that region because they're definitely prone to getting large tornadoes in June. Canada's only F5 tornado touched down right around there in June. So I'm sure they can do without that. And the northwestern U.S. getting a chunk of that cool air working on shore in this satellite loop has the appearance of cold air advection and unstable conditions in the mid and upper levels. Conditions are overcast at Portland and Seattle and through the Willamette Valley. And the mercury running about 61 at Portland, 55 at Seattle, and a little bit warmer out in the high deserts. And a quick check on that heat wave we're expecting next week. Once again, I'm going to focus on the official forecast, not the GFS, because the GFS is just not very accurate with this kind of thing. There's the highs for today, 105 at Phoenix, 97 in Vegas. For tomorrow, a little bit of a warm-up. 110 at Tucson and Phoenix, coming up to 97 there at Grand Junction. Gets even worse on Sunday. 114 for Phoenix, and even worse on Monday. 115 for Phoenix, 111 Tucson, and 104 for Grand Junction. And probably the worst day is going to be Tuesday. And they've got Grand Junction with 106. And that's going to tie the all-time record high for that city. Some very high heat at Phoenix, 116. That is well below the all-time record, so no problems there. Just some serious heat. And then for Wednesday, a little bit of a break from that heat. Comes down, well, it's up to 117 at Phoenix, but you can see Grand Junction dropping off to 105. And then Thursday, a little bit of a relief from that heat. Although I'm seeing Yuma coming up to 116 there. So maybe not quite over in those deserts in that region. Anyway, we'll check back on that on Monday. And just as a reminder, if you're not a supporter, your funding is greatly appreciated. And for the cost of a Starbucks coffee every month, you can rest easy knowing that you're supporting this project. And the funding is kind of necessary because I'm always in a bind as far as how much time and effort to spend on the books and software and so forth. And this video program takes up a large chunk of the afternoon. And in the end, it's just kind of a business decision. So. If you want to see these programs keep coming, we do need your support. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday for the private supporter edition. And we'll check in on that heat wave that's about to envelop the southwestern U.S. And for everybody else, we will see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.